You're listening to Factual America. What uh, the great hack is all about. What is the great hack about? That's, uh, well... Hmm. It's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. <laughs> I'd say... Uh, I, I, I think that, you know, let's start with what, what I hope... Um, what I hope it's 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 it can it can it can provide for us when we look back, mm. right? and I think that, that and from there we can maybe figure out what it's about. Right? It's very hard for a filmmaker, I think, to really describe what their film's about because there's uh, depends which day of the of the year you catch them. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but I think to me it's like the film is about uh, it, it, it's it's trying to capture this moment in time in history where we realized and felt this existential feeling that so many people in the world were feeling where I felt like, wait, uh, there's something that is kind of predicting my behavior and mm. is trying to shape my behavior in a way that I understand and don't fully understand. And that something has also been politicized um, in a way that is unlike any other political experience we've lived through thus far. I think that kind of really, that moment uh, of, of, of kind of awareness is what the great hack really captured. You know, it's this time when we realize that our data is this footprint that we leave behind in ways that we don't really understand and in ways we've not really been informed about, in ways we may not have really, fully consented to, and that that data is being used in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very complex uh, industry uh, to predict our behavior and try to shape it. And that... Hmm. I think the the conflict is really about how we've real we come to this realization that in this new era where data are traded for services in such a way that everything's been commoditized of our human behavior uh, and including our political views. Mm-hmm. And I think the question that that great hack I hope leaves people with is. What is this? What does an open society look like, and what is a democracy? How does a democracy function when our behavior and our political behavior has been said so commoditized to such a degree? I think that's really what the what the film captures. Now we use the the, the kind of the story of the Cambridge Analytica Facebook scandal as the kind of plot, so to speak, yeah. to house these questions, and that all comes about because we have these you know, great characters who give us access into their lives and provide a gateway for us to take these complicated ideas and philosophical questions that some of which I just voiced and personalize them into an experience that that is vulnerable, emotional and relatable to to an audience. And and what what struck me was uh, so how did you get you guys get on the case so early because it's not like you're just looking back I mean this thing this story is unfolding this the scandal is unfolding right in, f- in front of our eyes on camera um, and uh, so how did you know I guess the story broke in what 2017 although some of us were hearing about Cambridge Analytica before that taking credit for getting Trump elected but. Uh, you know, some of the st- allegations and things that were coming out, that was more 2017. So how did you get on the story so early and um, actually um, get these characters you, you mentioned, um, get them on camera? Well, I mean, I think we, um, how did we start? Well, you know, we, we had made a film called The Square, which was right. out the uh, Arab Spring Mm-hmm. through the lens of Tahrir Square and the events that occurred there, also through characters. Um, and, and in that film, we had witnessed technology play a part, which was quite interesting, because here was technology being, you know, uh, being heralded as the galvanizing uh, tool or instrument for democratic processes, right? Mm-hmm. Facebook was the you know, method by which people could gather and organize and Twitter gave everybody all the voiceless a voice uh, mm. and became a method of accountability, of abuse of power. And it was a magical moment in time when, when, when we felt like, wow, here are these tools that have come from the gods of Silicon Valley 
and have allowed for, um, you know, democracy, civil discourse, all these values that we love to blossom. Um, and the story kind of, you know, a lot of the world attention kind of left there. And, and I remember coming to the United States and seeing how um, Silicon Valley was so excited about, you know, the Arab Spring mm. um, and took a lot of credit for it. And then the pendulum swung the other way. <laughs> and we saw these same tools being used first by, auto, you know, uh, um, autocratic regimes that are authoritarian and, and, and yeah. to go after dissidents. And then we saw these, you know, same tools being used by ISIS to radicalize people. And so all of a sudden it was like, wait, the tools aren't inherently democratic. It's about how they're used. You know, the, this is, could be a tool or a weapon. Depends whose hands it's in. And there was no accountability, though, from, you know, the technology companies about the record sites that were left behind by some of these technologies being mishandled. And so we quickly, I think, had an awareness that the pendulum of technology swings. It's not just inherently positive. Mm. And when it swings in the other direction, it actually has a lot of externality costs onto society that we don't quite understand or, 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 or may not be taking notice to. And the reason why we're not taking notice to them is because oftentimes they're quite invisible, right? How do you tell a crime story without having a crime scene? Right? And yeah. so that was kind of like where we had started to, to begin this process. And we were interested in the space of hacking and, and, and how uh, the space of hacking was actually more about uh, information warfare 